Yes, I'm recording. Okay, let's count down. All right, five, five four, four, three, three two, two, one. 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 Well. Welcome to the Beverage Podcast. Welcome to the Beverage. Where nothing works. <laughs> nothing works, and Christmas the never happens. Points don't matter. Yes. That's right, the points never matter. The points don't matter. Uh, <clears throat> Marcus... It's our 18th episode, Christmas episode. Oh, Christmas. Ching, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <coughs> Those are sleigh bells. Um, oh, they were? <laughs> yeah. You couldn't tell? There was perfect. <laughs> Whatever. Oh. Fine. You don't understand my art. <coughs> this is don't great. I have, a, I have a cough and I'm doing. going to be talking for an hour. So this should be, this is the Grammy episode, I think. I agree. The podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. If they don't didn't before, they will now. Oh, great! <laughs> so it's Christmas time. In the air, pooping everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me what you did this past two weeks. Um, Marcus. a whole lot of nothing other than seeing <laughs> Star Wars. And uh, it was amazing. I think that's I pretty much when everyone's bit. done. Yeah. I mean, I did some Christmas stuff with people, but nobody wants to talk about that. So No, no one cares. Right. But yeah, Star Wars was the big thing. <coughs> I'm a new man. Would you shut up already? I can't. <clears throat> okay. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> We're exciting. This, this might be a short one because a lot of That's the news is focused around Star Wars, and <coughs> so we got a couple things, and then we'll we got a sponsor, we got a sponsor that yeah this episode, Christmas episode. It's a good one. S- super pumped about that. Delicious. And then after that, we'll probably or we'll be talking spoilers. So if you haven't seen it. Don't listen to this episode. <laughs> Pretty much. Or listen, listen until after the sponsor, because the sponsor, of course, is the most important thing. They give us money. Yeah. And then... We'll warn you before we start spoiling. Yeah. All spoiling. Mmm. Mmm, baby. Mmm, baby, baby. <laughs> 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 baby, baby. Who, baby, baby. <laughs> yeah so let's mm-hmm. get into it alright there were some new details about oh, oh god <coughs> well while he's coughing I'm not wearing pants so just throw about it out there Pokemon Go Pokemon Go, Go Merge I'm gonna read this little schnip bit schnip bit earlier this week Niantic Representative spoke with the website Venture Beat about Pokemon Go, <coughs> revealing several new details about the game. As suspected, Pokemon will be tied to certain geographic locations oh. with a certain type, only appearing in certain areas. Meaning, the Graveler will always be in water. Yes. A water type like Magikarp would be found close to water. In addition, oh, yeah. rarer Pokemon may only be located in a few locations, which will encourage people to travel or find the trading partners. The game will also feature gyms, trading with other players, and battling, all of the, of which are mainstays in the handheld Pokemon games. Niantic also revealed that if it would be that it would be using several functions from the other mobile games its other mobile game Ingress players will be able to join teams similar to the villainous team Rocket Rocket in the original games and participate in MMO like events all of which is designed to build 
the Pokemon game community, you'll recall that the first trailer for Pokemon Go showed dozens of players working together to capture a Mewtwo in the middle of Times Square. Niantic also stated that it will be near impossible to catch them all without either trading extensively or traveling around the world. That's pretty awesome. What if, like, people on, like, the International Space Station can, like, find Pokemon in space or something? <laughs> That's where you can only catch the original Mew. Yep. He's on the International Space Station. Are we singing? What? Are, you, are we singing now? What's happening? I don't know. Is that your... Did you get that Pokemon! operation? Pokemon! <laughs> Pokemon! Travel the world and catch them all! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Yeah! That was, that was extra for everybody. That was the free part of the show. If you want the full version, it's on iTunes. iTunes. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I like the sound of that. It seems like it'd be You're like really super awesome. Super scrambly. Is your internet effing up or? Uh, it's pretty crappy, so that's probably what's going on. I don't know. We have Frontier, and it's like the cheapest, and it's super slow, but it works. So. I don't know what eat we have. I think we have Verizon. Fascinating. People, this is what people want to hear. What kind of service right. internet provider we have? Thirty bucks a month. Okay. What, what Pokemon do you think are going to be in Clinton? Probably the crappiest ones, like all the racist Pokemon, like uh, uh, I don't know, Diglett or something like that. Diglett. Yeah. Um. Some Rattatas, the Pidgeys. Yeah, definitely the Pidgeys. Those are going to be everywhere. Um, I hope that we have some Electabuzzes out at the power plant. That'd be awesome. That's what I want. <laughs> and then all the Magic Carps have three eyes. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, like a, they're like a rare Pokemon. There's a Red Gyarados in Clinton Lake. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's some deer like Stantler or something yeah be deer in that Buffalant or whatever that one's name is what? The Buffalant or I don't know how you say that but it's like know. a buffalo Pokemon oh uh-huh. um we also buffalo? have a landfill a buffalo in Illinois? Uh, not anymore but I mean there's a couple like here and there at a farm but Used to be, back in the day. Uh, we'll uh, we have a uh, area of disposal, so we'll go out there and catch garbodors. Yeah. <clears throat> so okay, what? So what kind of Pokemon types would be at the gy- those gyms, like in Illinois? Oh, where will the gyms be in Illinois? What's another one? And then what like kind what? of types of Pokemon? So I think there'd definitely just say- be one in Chicago. Yeah, I feel like there'd be a lot of normal type or something like that. I feel like there's one in Decatur, and the, it's a poison type. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Poison type, um, and like a cofagragus or something like that, since you're pretty much dead when you live there. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure there's like a grass type. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Move it. Maybe Pardon. like a flying, Chicago's is like flying type, maybe, I don't know. That could be cool. Ice type? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> or, I just say flying because it's like the Windy City and like air type Pokemon, so. Yeah. That'd be cool. I don't know that I'll I'm actually excited. end up buying that or not, I, but. <clears throat> I hope I, it doesn't take a lot of data, I said this before, but. So I'm interested in it. It sounds like a Pokemon game that's just like you get to move around and do stuff. Yeah. It sounds like as close to Pokemon as we'll ever get in real life. 
I want to be the very best that no one ever was. Uh, 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 to catch them is my big test. To train them is my call. That's true, it is. It is. Did you ever play the Pokemon games? You played like, um, some of the first ones, didn't you? Or you I played had, like, uh, life? the very first one. I, it was just a couple of years ago. Was The first one I played was X, and then I bought White. Uh, those are the only two I've played. And I guess we had uh we had Pokemon Coliseum long like way back oh, for yeah. the, the GameCube. <laughs> so I remember so, that. I that was a fun game. Evan. What? Remember when I yelled at Evan? <laughs> I don't, I don't remember we were that. recording and then I Evan was in the other room playing Pokemon Coliseum and he used an electric type on a rock type and I screamed at him about <laughs> yeah. it. I was like, You idiot! <laughs> Tucker's huge nerd out moment. Everybody knows you don't use an electric type on a rock type. That was great. I made a really big deal about it. We still made a really big deal about it (laughs) because he's an idiot. (laughs) Yeah, he is. And if you're listening to this, and I know you're not, (laughs) I'm going to tell everyone about that. (laughs) I'm telling your grandkids about it. You're a Pokemon idiot. They're going to disown you. I'm going to tell your future wife that, and then she's going to not marry you. Yeah, in your face. No marriage. Gonna be, you're going to be homeless and ladyless because you're homeless a Pokemon. Homeless and homeless. Uh, you're, you're a Pokemon disaster. All because you didn't know that you, <laughs> rock types are not affected by electric attacks. Gosh. Stay at home and eat all, all the freaking chips. What? <laughs> yeah. Ugh. Oh, if you see Evan winning, make sure you tell him that you can't use an electric attack on a rock type Pokemon. Yeah. He lives in Bloomington. It yeah. So yep. Tucker Maltby says you can't use an electric type on a rock type. <laughs> Let's, hey! Tucker says. Anyways. Tweet at the funny man. I don't remember what the numbers are. The funny man, a... kiss my butt. That's what it is. He has a weird Twitter handle, but if he only retweets Twitter pictures handle. of cats, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> and Simpsons. That's true. <coughs> Hold on here. I'll. Uh... Uh... I gotta. Bl- I gotta feed the elf. I just, just a minute. Okay. You say bleed or feed? Feed him. <laughs> Look. Nice. That looks like uh, your mouth on a normal day. Yeah, it's going to be... Uh, go to Twitter, and it's going to be the funny man... Nine one one three. So Everybody the T, tweet at him. The T, the F, and the M are all capitalized. So the funny I man. Think that matters. Nine one one three. Tweet at him. Tell him he's an idiot, and that electric attacks don't work on rock types. Yes. All right. Let's move on. I feel a lot better after feeding that elephant. But <laughs> what was his name? Uh, the funny man. Nine one no, one three. What's the elephant's name? Uh, Percival. Maybe that was it. I don't know. I don't remember. Next topic. Maybe we have a new elephant. Are we done talking Percival. about Pokemon? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you little you filthy animal. <laughs> Let's talk about X Men: The Apocalypse Trailer. X Men. <laughs> We have transition music now. We're moving up in the world. <laughs> um, so initially, I will admit that I thought Apocalypse looked horrible in all mm-hmm. the pictures that we saw for him. Seeing him in the trailers looks a lot better than what the pictures were showing. I will give him that. That's true. The I thought overall the trailer was pretty cool, but I thought Jean Grey, whoever <coughs> she is playing her, Terrible, 
terrible, terrible actress. Like, oh, yeah? Yeah, I thought that part was all like crazy cheesy, but the rest of the trailer was awesome. <clears throat> She's in Game of Thrones. Did you know that? No, I don't watch Game of Thrones. The later, I don't watch... lady, lady playing game, uh, the lady playing Game of Thrones, playing Jean Grey is in Game of Thrones. Oh, isn't everybody in Game of Thrones nowadays? Yeah, but oh, oh well, that's a spoiler. We'll get to that later. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, I liked the uh, all the stuff when they're talking about uh, how he's he's really old and all these other people and history or him because mm-hmm. I just was just listening to Rachel and Miles explain the X-Men and they're talking about uh, or, or recapping like old X-Factor issues with Apocalypse where uh, he every god of death in ancient religions is Apocalypse mm-hmm. so like Set and all these other guys that's him I thought that was cool. Like, every single one was Apocalypse. Yeah, it makes sense. And, uh, so I like that. I liked the scene where they're like, he's always had four followers, and it's like, mm-hmm. like the four horsemen of the Apocalypse, and it's like, they got, he got that from the Bible, and it was like, or he got, they got it from him, and I was like, yeah, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that was, that was, that was pretty good. I do think that, uh, Hearing him like act and talk made him seem more menacing, kind of. Mm-hmm. Oscar Isaac was really good. He's the guy who played Poe Dameron in Star Wars. He's playing Apocalypse. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I didn't realize that. Huh. He's a really good actor. So I think he'll do a good job. Just yeah. that he's stuck with Fox budget for makeup. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. I'm just yeah, really, I, really hoping that they don't ruin Archangel. He's like my one of my favorites of all time. I mean, all the really all the characters that they're using. Like I've always loved Storm and uh, Psylocke, and Archangel's cool. But I thought it was interesting that Magneto was supposed to be one of the Horsemen. Potentially, mm-hmm. so it's what they're kind of showing it as. But well, Pop has but... always gone for like. Sorry, I interrupted you, but. Uh, he always goes for like the people who are weak, or who have strong wills more. Yeah, he was. He's gonna. He's. I think they're setting up that he's in a low place after it's a future past because he was like publicly beaten by mm. uh, Mystique and Charles. Yeah, like on television in front of everyone. So he's in like a low place after that. Yeah, that makes sense. And they obviously alluded to the fact that they that Apocalypse was choosing um, characters that could pretty much offset the X Men. Yeah, like I, they said something about it, so that they had somebody to like directly combat the X Men and stuff. But yeah. so it should be interesting. I'm going to see it. I don't have high hopes for it, but I'm still going to see it. And I think that's how like the Batman. Is. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I've not just, I've just not been impressed by the X Men movies. Like they were okay, and I kind of liked them, but there was nothing like, great about them. I like Days a lot. Days, Days was past. Days is the only one that I would, I think I could comfortably recommend to people to see. But It'll yeah, the other ones are just kind of yeah. yeah. There's so some actually that mean, some good fight scenes in it, right? Um. So does that mean like the original like three X Men movies that came out? Do those not technically exist anymore? Yeah, they don't exist. Okay, they well, that makes the me feel better. Mind. That makes I me mean, feel X2 better. X Two is great. I like X Two a lot just because Nightcrawler that opening scene. Right, Nightcrawler was really awesome, but I just feel like it kind of lacked something. But Wait, it was a different. Time too. It was like early two thousands. Yeah. Before everything. That's true. And like without kinda... that, we wouldn't have the Marvel stuff we have today. Blade and the X Men movies are what like showed the way for everyone. Like made the money that Marvel needed to make other movies. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> oh so, yeah. 
And I heard, I'm, I hope they don't do a lot with, with Mystique. <coughs> I agree. So I feel bad for Jennifer Lawrence because she just don't want to do this part in this movie. And then she won an Oscar. And now, and now she has to like do all, all this. They're blowing up her character because she won an Oscar after X, after first class for a different movie. Yeah. And, like, she's under contract, so she had, so they made her part bigger. And I yeah. heard that she refused to do, do like blue makeup for this one. What? Because she, cause she doesn't want to do the movie. That's garbage. They're making her do it because she has a contract, mm-hmm. and. And she's a big star now. Well, she's a terrible actress either way. I'm not a fan of her, but I might be one of the oh. few. But I like her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I thought that. Would... So I, would... I hope she doesn't do a lot in the movie. I'd rather yeah, same here. You get to know young Jean and young Scott and young Nightcrawler, Jubilee. I want to learn mm-hmm. about all these new characters. I hope they don't go real big into Mystique. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> they've got a they've got a good setup now to make it cool, and yeah, I, I agree with that. I'd like to see the new character stuff. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it could set up some cool stuff. For the future. I hate that they, they were wearing armor. Why? Put on some costumes. Yeah. Or put some color in the on the armor that distinguishes them and makes them look like superheroes. Yeah, I agree. Brian Singer, you're failing. I know. It's so... Because we know that costumes work now because we've seen other superhero movies. Like, that was the point that they did leather suits mm-hmm. back in the old ones. It was like, well, they look goofy when they're in costumes. It's like, yeah. well, they look like superheroes when they're in costumes. They'll put them in their freaking costumes. <laughs> yeah. Just make them, instead of just being tights, just update them like they did in the Avengers and stuff. Like, Captain America's looked amazing and... All that right. stuff. You can still make them like the comic books, but you can update them so that they transition well into an actual movie. Mm-hmm. I hope that... Uh, yeah, I'm sure they could. I hope after this they get a new director. Mm-hmm. I someone agree. who better understands the X-Men, you know, makes them feel like a family. And like more character stuff than... That's kind of what the X-Men are about, because they're like a family where the Avengers are just like a team. Yeah. Yep. You need to make them feel like that and like have the inner, all the character stuff and mm-hmm. mostly. Yeah, I, feel like, I feel like that's what makes the Avengers or the uh, X-Men more interesting is they're outcasts and they're kind of, everybody's kind of out to get them, but together they're a family and they do some, they're something greater together. Eh. Yeah, because like X original trilogy is like the Wolverine show, and now mm-hmm. this trilogy is like the Mystique show, yeah. and and the Charles Xavier and Magneto show. Mm-hmm. But Magneto's the most interesting character of this new trilogy. So I agree. I think uh, Michael Fassbender is uh, was an awesome choice for Magneto too. I think that's his name. <laughs> Definitely. I agree. You're, you've made some wonderful points. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> hey, let's take a break. Take a break. Another commercial. Unless you have something else to say. Commercial. Commercial. We'll be back after this. Commercial. Oh boy, I can't wait for lunch. We should have been working hard at school all day, eh, buddy? That's right, Billy. Let's see what the lunch lady has for us today. Hey, lunch lady, what do you have for us today? Artificially grown organic mush. 
rich in vitamins and low in flavor. Oh man, don't we deserve a tasty treat after our hard day of schooling? Yeah. Yeah. Did somebody say tasty treat? Winter pizza. That's right, kids, and I've got just the thing. Wow! He turned our gross old lunch into origami pizza foldums. A new tasty pizza snack only found in Major Pizza's Pizza Palace. Not so, Bobby. The origami pizza foldums will soon be available in a store near you. That's right. Major Pizza's Origamo Pizza Foldums will soon be in a store near you beginning January 1st. So you will be able to enjoy that Fleeky Crisp Pizza Treat in your choice of pepperoni, sausage, or four cheese explosion right inside the comfort of your very own home. So, what do you think, kids? Pepperoni is my favorite! I like the cheese. Oh, I, I've got a sensitive palate. I think I'll try the green mash. Wait! Don't eat that! The organic mush provided by the school seems to be having some sort of horrific effect on Durkle. It's collapsed on the floor. His pasty white skin is stretched and warped, splitting open. A substance similar to the cream pulpy mush served by the school cafeteria seems to be pouring from the gashes. Oh, his eyes have rolled back into his head and are changing to a sickly yellow color. There seems to be vines growing from his mouth, wrapping around him, holding him and the mush in place. No, wait, he is standing now. His skin is now covered in a slimy green substance. His body is easily five times his former size. The vines seem to be tightening, forming the muscles of this monstrous abomination. The mouth of the Durkle Beast is massive, takes up most of his now necklace body, stretching down to his mid chest. <laughs> Not if I have anything to say about it. Get out of here, kids. I'll handle this. Without warning, a white hot beam of energy has struck the beastman's eye, leaving a searing gash of steam in his weight. But what's this? There's a slice of delicious meat lovers pizza in the beast's eye. Durkle is ripping the slice from his eye and slinging it away, and the wound is closing on its own. <laughs> Your greasy snack has no effect on my hearty vitamin enriched form. You weak mortal. It is time for you to be one with the garden. <laughs> His fingers are unraveling. The vines are becoming snakes and striking at the nature. But have no fear. He is too agile. He is flipping and spinning in midair with his custom yellow and red members only jacket flapping in the air. Complete with custom pepperoni emblem on the back. The major is narrowly missing being struck by the snake vines. This seems to be enraging the beast, folks. And what's this? The beast is charging full force now. Major is pulling his mozzarella gun from his utility belt and firing a strand of cheese up to the rafters of the cafeteria and swinging out of the way up onto a beam near the ceiling. M-I-T-T, identify target. Major has commanded his modular intelligence and tactics tool, or MIT for short, to analyze the plant monster. 
the armored plate on the back of our U.S. gauntlet is opening and a laser shot from it is filling the area around the beast and scanning the monster. Identified. The creature is a member of the violent edible greens, gaining integral earth subjugation, also known as veggies. They are a race of artificially constructed plant beings that take over a host. They contain a hive mind and are resistant to unnutritional food-based combat. They are known to lack flavor and are disliked by most. After a burst of frustration and rage from Major Pizza's daring maneuver, the beast has located him in the rafters. He seems to be focusing intensely, his fists clenched, in fiery determination as its face is turning a sickly brown from holding its breath. Oh my! Suddenly, long orange thorns have burst from its body, covering its back and forearms. These carrots will help you see that you're in this near major, and soon all will join us in the god. Now, the monster seems to be whipping his arms at the Major, sending carrot missiles flying into the air. The vegetables are deflecting off rafters, puncturing the roof of the cafeteria. But the Major is raising his mitt, and in a burst of light, and the sweet scent of <laughs> fried dough and tomatoes is filling the cafeteria air, just as a rogue carrot strikes a newly formed Deep Dish Pizza Shield. You may have carrots, but you don't have the protection of the Chicago-style classic. Your pizza won't protect you, Major, no matter how delicious. You underestimate this pizza, and you underestimate me. Let me teach you the meaning of flavor. This pie is on me, or should I say, on you. And with that hearty delivered speech... Major Pizza slings his pie at the monster, its cheesy perfection striking the beast in the eyes, blinding it. The beast is loving out a mighty roar in agony, leaving the Major his opening. With a swift back flip, our hero leaps into action, shooting a strand of cheese as a lifeline. He swings towards the beast. The Major is brandishing his motor-powered pizza cutter from his utility belt as the monster is flailing and whipping its long viney tendrils blindly in all directions as it tries to scrape off the pizza from its face. But the acrobatic prowess of Major Pizza is unmatched, spinning and swinging from strands of sweet mozzarella cheese. The Major flips high into the air Finding his feet on the ceiling and pushing off, soaring down towards Durkle. He swings his pizza cutter wildly, slicing away Durkle's vines. As the Major makes his way at breakneck speed towards the monster without warning, the beast turns, exposing his back, covered with carrots, sharpened to a point like needles. Carrots fire from Durkle's back, exploding and firing in all directions. The Major tries his best to deflect them and it with his pizza cutter, but a stray carrot hits him in the gut and sends him off course, smashing into a lunch table. You fool! There is no way you could stand up to the power of the garden! Our nutritional value is too strong! The beast begins to laugh as he rips a green cheese from his face, but his chuckle is soon silenced by the sight of the Major rising to his feet. His hands tightly grip the carrot impaling him, and he yanks it free. A jolt of pain and shock covers our hero's face as a gush of blood pours from his wound. But the Major quickly regains his footing and sets his cheese gun from mozzarella to medical cheese and sprays it into his wound. You may be more nutritious than me, but there is one thing you don't have. And what is that? A kick of flavor! Major Pizza's words have resulted in a whirlwind forming around him, 
sense a scent of cooking pizza and breadsticks fill the cafeteria as his foot begins to glow a fiery red and is distorted by the heat emanating off of it. As the turtle beast begins to step backwards in the amazement of the Major's exhibition of power, our hero then begins his advance. He begins charging on the monster, moving too fast to see, as the beast frantically tries to fire off his remaining carrots. But Major Pizza easily evades him by planting his foot on a tape and leaping into the air, spinning like a top, deflecting any carrots that hit him with the powerful velocity of his spins. The Major seems to slow down in midair as he readies his final assault. Looks like salad is off the menu. <laughs> Major's kick lands hard on the side of Turkle's face. The resulting shockwave rips the green and vines away, revealing the small child host. But the waves of flavor continue outward, shaking the entirety of the cafeteria, destroying it. As rubble begins to fall, Major Pizza grabs the boy and rushes outside just as the building collapses on itself. That was close! I couldn't have defeated the veggie threat without the power of pizza! So don't forget, you too can have the power of pizza if you go to your local grocery store January 1st and buy Major Pizza's Origano Pizza Foldums, or go to your local Major Pizza's Pizza Palace now. What the heck is going on here? Officer, I can explain everything. Sir, put down your weapon. You mean my cheese gun? Officer, there seems to be some... This is car 2814, we have a code 430. Mascot related destruction of property. I'm gonna need backup. <laughs> We're back. Yeah. I'm really hungry now. a great now. commercial. I know. I really want some pizza foldums. Kind of went off gotta... the rails here for a second. Yeah. I gotta wait till January to get them around here, but whatever. It'll be worth it. Hey, it's almost January. That's true. Christmas in the January. <laughs> it's funny because you're, you like, clip there, and I was like, you're auto tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe so what, this is it. <laughs> We're getting into spoiler territory now. Spoiler territory! Oh, oh, oh. Spoiler territory! Spoiler territory! It's been announced. Perfect. Beautiful. <clears throat> so, Marcus. Tucker. We. I've seen it twice. I've seen it once. I saw it uh, Thursday, and I saw it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Which... No. <laughs> no. Uh, so... What did you think of it? I thought it was absolutely amazing. Okay. I had like crazy I had crazy high hopes for it. I didn't tried not to, but I couldn't help it. And then I was totally blown away by all of it. So before the okay. movies came out and stuff, I didn't I just kind of watched the trailers and that's it. Like I didn't look into anything else or find out who characters were supposed to be or anything cuz I wanted to be surprised. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. I tinkled a lot. Uh-huh. And how about you? I liked it. I thought it was good. It was fun. I liked the characters a lot, even though there were some flaws. And we'll talk about that. And, uh... I liked... I think, you know, like, Han and Leia were, like, back in it. They felt like their characters. Especially Han's... Especially Harrison Ford, who's been kind of phoning it in. Especially with Indiana Jones, he kind of phoned it in. Yeah. I think he did. He did. He was back in it. He was, he was Han Solo again. Mm-hmm. Chewie was Chewie. Uh, C-3PO is definitely C-3PO again. <laughs> yeah. I love that scene where they're like reunited and then C-3PO steps in front of him. <laughs> yeah. He's like, sir, do you remember me? I know I have this red arm now, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was good. I I really really like all the new characters and everything. I like 
I just like who they are and how they acted and stuff, and I just thought it flowed really well and was cool. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> so who? So what? What was your favorite scenes? And I really don't know. I. That's one of the issues I heard, was that. And all the other movies, you have, like, that standout scene that's, like, something you remember about it. Mm-hmm. Like, in, like in, even in the prequels, you think back to episode one, what do you think of? Um, you think about Darth Maul, the big fight scene yeah. at the end. That's, like, the thing that sticks out to you. Mm-hmm. And, he, and then in episode two, you've got Yoda finally fighting. That's your big thing that stuff sticks out to you. And then episode three, you've got... Uh, a big lava scene at the end, or yeah. or or Darth Vader's big no. Yeah. <laughs> Episode four, the Death Star blows up. Mm-hmm. There's this. I think the scene where they dress up as stormtroopers is like a big scene too. With you yeah. remember, and mm-hmm. then Episode four, you've got of course Obi Wan getting whacked too. But yeah, and then I am your father is a big moment in Empire, mm-hmm. and then. Wicked, of course, this is a big moment. Absolutely. In return. <laughs> then it awakens. I don't think there really is a big scene like that. I feel like all of it is just like... I mean, they go they go and they blow up that planet thing and everything. But you we've know, seen but it's that like, before. Yeah, we've done the Death Star twice, so that's nothing new. But I just feel like the whole movie was just that one big scene. Like, there wasn't right. any... Like, it was just put together so well that... Like, it wasn't to where it was all action all the time, and you didn't get any good story or character development. I feel like it was just really well balanced with both. Like, the whole thing was like, oh my gosh, that's a, oh my gosh, well, oh! So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was righteous. <coughs> yeah. But, and, I, uh, I liked how they um, unveiled the big reveal stuff. I felt like I felt like stuff wasn't done cheesy. I felt like it was all like presented well, like believable, and it was, you know. <clears throat> I guess. I mean, I didn't. I revealed some stuff, but there's like because they revealed that like he's Kylo Ren is. Uh, Han Solo's son, and it's just like he offhandedly says it, doesn't he? Yeah. It's not really a big reveal. It's just like, oh yeah, your dad, Han Solo. It's just like, yeah, it could have been. It could have been a big thing, like later. But see, I kind of like that. I kind of like that they did it that way. Like he was talking to him, your father, Han Solo, or whatever. And I feel like a lot of times in in movies that there is a huge trilogy behind them or something like that that they kind of make the reveals and then it's like boom and like a zoom in on their face and it's kind of stupid and a little too emotional or whatever. But this is just like, you know, this is an everyday thing. We've worked on it. I've had to work with you forever to like hate your father and get over him. And, you know, that's kind of your driving force. So I felt like they revealed that well. Um, but again, personal opinion. But <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and I love that Daniel wondering... Craig was a storm tro- stormtrooper. Oh yeah, that Daniel was Craig. That's what I was gonna say. There's a lot of uh, Game of Thrones actors in it too, because the casting director for Star Wars is the same one as uh, Game of Thrones. Oh okay. So there was a bunch of uh, Game of Thrones <laughs> actors in it. <clears throat> and Simon Pegg, did you did you find him? Uh huh. He was the uh, guy who was. Giving out rations on Jakku oh, for okay. parts. He was in a suit. <laughs> I gotcha. That makes sense. I do remember seeing pictures of him on set, but I forgot to look and see who it was. Uh huh. <clears throat> what did you think about? I've heard some some controversy about a couple characters. People were saying that. Uh, that Finn's character didn't make they didn't be, yeah they didn't think it was believable that uh, he would turn or the way they did it from being a stormtrooper. Yeah. Um. 
I don't believe that. I believed it. But some people are yeah. saying I'm that like. Yeah, I was going to, I, I felt like um, the way that they went about it was, again, I, I like the way that they did it. I mean, I feel like if he, because they're not using clones anymore. So it's not like you can you can try and condition somebody to a certain point, but you know overall their conscience is gonna, if it's strong enough, it's gonna override it, override right. whatever's going on. So, <clears throat> and his character stayed. Um, I wouldn't have believed it if his character hadn't stayed so consistent throughout the whole movie, like the his mentality and everything, and like the person that he was fit to me for somebody that would do that. So I found it believable. But. <clears throat> yeah, I think it makes sense because he says he was he was working sanitation, mm-hmm. and then that battle of Jakku was the first battle he'd been in. Yeah, and then in that battle, he he almost his his comrade dies in, in front of him, mm-hmm. and he like sees that, and he like you can tell like by his. Way he reacts to that, it is kind of jarring. Like mm-hmm. someone he he probably knew just died. Yeah, and then well, and then like he, he's being told to like kill all these villagers, these mm-hmm. unarmed vill- villagers. Mm-hmm. You can tell by that it's like, oh, what if my friend just die for if I'm gonna murder innocent people? Like, what is all this? Yeah. So it made sense to me, like based on that. Right. I mean, he's he's obviously not a not a heartless bastard, so. You know, it, of you course, it's going to affect him. That he is, you can tell later on that he is like, he doesn't like the First Order. Mm. He like talks about how he he was taken from his home and he like resents them for that. You could tell. Yeah. When he was young. He never knew mm-hmm. his family and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's completely believable. He's not a clone. He wasn't raised in that. You know, he was obviously taken from his family. He didn't go voluntarily. So, yeah, you know, to me, that's that's the perfect setup for somebody that's going to defect like that. Right. Uh, what did you think about Ray? I thought she was awesome. I, I really, really liked her character. Um, I thought, um, as an actress, I thought she was like really believable as that character. Like uh-huh. I always, I always judge, um, movies and actors and stuff like that at, by, if they can make me not see them as, their real person that they are, but as their character, if I can forget uh-huh. that I'm watching a movie and it's more like a documentary or something that to me. And I, I got that from pretty much everybody in the movie, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> well, Finn and Ray, they're like, uh, their actors are pretty much unknowns, which yeah. is the, what, what they did for, uh, the original Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Like Mark Hamill and Carrie Fisher were pretty much unknowns at that time. Yeah, and that I helps really, with I, believability. Yeah, I like that about their characters that I don't have any previous history with it, and even Han right. Solo. Like I look at him as Han Solo, and not Harrison Ford. You know, it's him, but <clears throat> right. But yeah, I uh, thought she was cool. I thought I liked how they ended up like revealing her powers and stuff. And again, like when they revealed her abilities. Um, because of her character, because of just the person that she is, I felt like it was believable what they did. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, I have some issues with Ray, and I'm going to bring him up now. And it's been going around the internet all weekend, is that she there's, there's a term that I've been describing her as, I don't know if you might have heard it, it's called a Mary Sue. Mm-hmm. It's like a character who's really good at everything. Yeah. And it makes them boring because nothing, there's no conflict in what they do because they do everything great. And some people are getting confused and they're thinking it's a sexist term. <laughs> they're yeah. getting really mad about it. <laughs> but uh, I know I'd agree because she does do everything like almost supernaturally well, like within mm-hmm. two or three tries. Yeah. Because she's. Like she has a laundry list of skills that are like she's mm-hmm. she knows everything about spaceships. She's a scavenger. She can 
claw. She can spelunk in giant starships. Mm-hmm. She uh, she can fly the Millennium Falcon, having never th- flown it before. Mm-hmm. And she can fix it in ways that Han Solo can't even fix it. She, within two tries of shooting a blaster, she's an ace shot. Uh, she... She used, she's using force techniques within minutes of discovering what the force is that took right. like two or three movies to do. Like, she does a force pull at the end, and Luke does it, can barely do that during mm-hmm. in Empire. And she yeah. does a, a Jedi mind trick uh, before that, and Luke doesn't even do that until the third movie. Right. Just like she's yeah. so... And she doesn't get hurt at all during the whole movie. And she gets, yeah, she gets like knocked out one time or something like that for a second. She gets the but... force knocked out. She doesn't get hurt. Yeah. She, she wa- he waves his hand. And she goes to sleep. She doesn't get yeah, hurt. That's right. That's right. And the yeah, only time I... that she's almost in pain is when Kylo Ren's like trying to uh, force interrogate her, but then she reverses it and she force interrogates him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I I've read some stuff about that, and I agree a little bit, but at the same time, I it doesn't bother me because of the character that she is. So obviously she's supposed she's the new like like Luke. The thing about Luke was is he didn't know anything. Like he was he was a stupid teenager when they found him. You know, Luke was not like, it, but Luke had the same abilities like her. Like he was an ace pilot. You know, he could fix everything, new stuff about mechanical stuff. And the same way with Anakin. Like, Anakin was an ace pilot, and he shouldn't have been. He was able to fix everything all the time, you know, whatever it may have been. <clears throat> and he um, had abilities that nobody else did. But Anakin, the thing about Anakin is he was a spoiled little kid that didn't want his mom to go away. And Luke was a dumb teenager. When he started learning about the Force, he never wanted to listen and never wanted to do anything that anybody told him. But the thing about Rey is, is that she she had a driving force her whole life. Like, her family was taken away from her. She's a survivor, and her whole goal in life was to just survive until her family came back for her. She's very strong-willed, and she obviously knew the history about like jedis and about han solo and stuff like that so you know she's obviously uh, uh i don't know a courageous character or a very strong-willed character so this stuff she's always wanted uh, she's always wanted an ability like this or something or she's always tried to be the very best so like pokemon um So now that she has the ability and finds out what it is, it kind of comes naturally to her. So she obviously is, the force is like super strong and strong enough that when it awakened in her that, you know, everybody else felt it. So that's, I I get that argument that, you know, you said about that. And I also see the other side of it as I still believe it because of who the character is. I felt like they did a good enough development of it that it seems to fit. So she's not only, you know, she's like brave and everything like that, but she's also humble in it as well. So she's, I feel like she's far more mature than Anakin or Luke ever were. And she has like the, the force strength that they had or more. So when you give a mature person that they're going to be able to manipulate it a lot faster than somebody else that's very immature with it. Right, no, I so, mean, I could I could see that, but I feel still feel mm-hmm. like it would have been better story wise if it was more progressed throughout right. the movies, like Luke's. Mm-hmm. I don't know, because where does she have to go from here? Like, if she trades <clears throat> any more, she's gonna be like so awesome and everything. <laughs> and if she yeah. starts to get less awesome, it's gonna be like we're backpedaling, like. Well, you could do this in the first movie. Why are you so bad now? Mm-hmm. I gotta blow my woes. Whoa. Yeah, and I I see I see that argument too. And that's why I think it'll be interesting to see where where we go from here, because even though she she could do that, she's still not 
I feel like she did it because she was in a pressure situation. She works well under pressure and could do it, but I don't think she under she doesn't understand how to use it yet. So, right. And obviously, well, the she people, knows the, a lot. Yeah, she and, can, she can do a lot of techniques now. Mm-hmm. I mean, she was force pulling. She was mind tricking. Mm-hmm. She was in force interrogating. She uh. Could fight with a lightsaber. She's never fought with one before. She did a whole heck of a lot better than Finn did. Yeah, because Finn had never fought with a lightsaber either, and he was using it like a baseball bat. That's what mm-hmm. it felt like to me. Yeah. And then she, once she like focused and used the force, and she was like beating the crap out of Kylo Ren. Mm-hmm. Well, she who grew had up been using... training all his life to use the force. Right. But again, him like the thing about Kylo Ren is is he's so emotionally driven that. Once she kind of got into his head, you know, he's just fighting angrily, swinging kind yeah, of started that, swinging that's like how Finn. The Sith fight though, the Sith gets stronger with those kinds of emotions. Yeah, so that's it's like true. the style of the Sith because he was hitting his wound to make it the pain more, and that's how Sith gets stronger is by mm-hmm. pain and suffering and anger and rage. Yeah, they get physically stronger when they feel those emotions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I I agree with you, and I I disagree at the same time. I, you know, right. I think it's it will be interesting to see where they go from there. Yes, definitely. So, I want to yeah. know more, but yeah. And I mean, it, I still like the movie. Don't get me wrong. Right. It's just these are the things that like stick out to me. Yeah. So, because we're nerds, we nitpick. Exactly. That's what we're all about. We complain about stuff that we have no control over or could ever do on our own. Right. <laughs> but, yeah. So and and I don't know if I don't know if they did that because the I mean the dudes are the bad guys in this are worse than they ever have been before, I guess, is kinda of what they're making it out to be. So you know. And I suppose if the new person's gonna awaken then they need to be of <coughs> great power or whatever so yeah we'll see where it goes right. and i'm really interested to see if they like when when they reveal who her parents are and everything like if she's actually like my two thoughts are maybe she's luke's daughter um i'm not completely sold on that maybe she is han and leia's other daughter um because like the younger daughter cuz kylo maybe. seems to be older but not a ton older and maybe they, after Kylo turned, that's when they dropped her off so that she could be safe. Um, and then maybe, you know, she's just the new person that the Force chose. I don't know. Maybe. There's kind of there's kind of stuff in the movie that could lead to all three of those things. So I feel like they did a good job of masking stuff to keep you interested in the next. I have a theory on Ray, actually. And I wanna I wanna take this time to kind of uh I I know where it wants to end. I tried explaining it last night to my friend, but it didn't go as well. But I'm gonna try it again. <laughs> go on. Well the second movie you find out that Ray is not Luke's daughter. She's kinda of like, Oh no, what's what do I do? Who who am I? So he, they're going to try and find that out throughout the movie. So the main bad guys of the second movie would be the Knights of Ren, the, mm-hmm. the group of bad guys that Kylo Ren is in charge of, as she, you saw in that flashback. So they're trying to, like, uh, run. They're running from them, and they're trying to figure out how to beat them. <coughs> Ray is like fighting and she's learning more about uh, herself and she's doing more more things and just like in the first one she's doing them within one or two tries and she is su- succeeding. She's better than anyone else at them. And everyone's like, dang, Ray, you're so good. Have you ever done that before? It's like, no, I just started. <laughs> I just did it right now. It's mm-hmm. the first time I've ever done it. And she, and, like the more she does it, the more uh, sh- like the stronger her force gets. So she's like fighting, and like maybe near the end of the movie, she's like having to fight like two or three knights of Ray at the same time, and she's like, I don't know what to do. And then she's just like reaches out, trying to like force push somebody, and then it's force lightning, 
hits all three of them. And, and Luke's like, whoa, how'd you do, do that? And she's like, I don't know. I just felt came natural to me. And it's like, oh, that's weird. So maybe there was like a big final confrontation with Kylo Ren again at like the base of the, uh, the Knights of Ren. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, well, and maybe Kylo Ren just like hints at the truth and it's like, I know who you really are. And it's like, like as he's escaping, like Kylo Ren will come back and he's like, he's fully mastered now. Like they said at the end, he's like a full force guy. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, you know, maybe you should check some of these computers before he like runs away. Mm-hmm. And so they like check the computers and they're like, they find out that Ray is actually like Jason Bourne. And she's like actually like been s- secretly trained. Like she's got all these implants in her head of like hundreds of designs. It's like she knows everything. She has like this, these subconscious implants. Have you ever seen the Born Supremacy and yeah. all that stuff? Uh huh. So she's like, she knows all this stuff. She's so good at everything. It's because she's like subconsciously been trained to do all these things. And it's like it's like an old empire uh, project that they've been working on secretly. Yeah. But uh, so <coughs> so she finds out. That the guy who was uh, on Jakku, the old guy that gave him the map to Luke, mm-hmm. was a friend of Luke's who he had assigned to watch over Rey as, while she was on Jakku, like uh-huh. her Obi, like her version of Obi Wan. Right. Like Luke, when he was out exploring, he found this girl, and he tried to train her, but he could like sense that something was off. So he's like, and then the Knights of Ren, like, attacked, and they're like, oh, no, take this girl and go hide her. Mm -hmm. So he took her and hit her on Jakku. And so they're they're like, so who are are my parents? And she finds out that she's an experiment that the Empire was doing to try and make, like, a bunch of sleeper agents for, like, force-attuned sleeper agents, like, for as agents of the empire mm-hmm. and they find out that they use the two strongest force users they could find to create a clone and raise a clone of Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine. <laughs> <laughs> and so you have the the second movie ends with Ray, I am your father, Darth Vader <laughs> moment, the same as like shadows, like it like mirrors empire where it's like you find out that Luke is Darth Vader. Or Vader is Luke's father, and then at the end of this, this one, you find that Ray, Darth Vader, is Ray's father. Yeah, that could be interesting. And that's gonna be her big conflict. Like after Luke found out that he was just like shut down, like he was just like it fucked him up, you know, mentally. Yeah. He's like, my dad is evil. What do I do now? And mm-hmm. now Ray, it's the same thing. It's like a double bombshell. It's like my dad is space Hitler. Both of my dads are space Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> what do I do? Mm-hmm. She has to struggle. <coughs> she has to struggle with like nature versus nurture. Am I destined to go to the dark side? Am I? Um, that's like her big conflict for third movie, I guess. I could see that being really cool. Like even even if they didn't use like Vader and Palpatine or whatever as the clone part, but like that story idea could be really cool. I think it'll also be really cool to see how, because Luke went to the dark side for a while and kind of uses both dark and light stuff, I think it'll be really interesting to see how he trains her and like what abilities she's going to end up having. Because see, she also says when when Kylo Ren's interrogating her, she says that she dreams of an ocean and an island. Yeah, like, and then I thought that that could be like an Easter egg to the cloning mm-hmm. facility from Episode Two. Mm-hmm. It's like, do you think she's talking about the end of episode or The Force Awakens where Luke's on that island? She's like, oh, that's what she was talking about. Right. But it would be like a fake out. It's like she's talking about the clone facility from uh, episode two. That's yeah. the island that she's dreaming of. That's true. That's very true. That could be a really I cool just blew, I just blew J.J. Abrams' script out of the water. J.J., just... <laughs> give us a call. 
AJ, call me, baby. Mm. So what'd you think? Yeah, I like that idea. That's cool. Do you have any ideas for what's going to happen next? I really don't. Like, my mind doesn't work creatively enough like that to think up something that cool or whatever. So <laughs> it's like, to me, it's the the farthest I can go is like, I would, I think it'd be cool if Ray came back and again, because Luke trained her, she kind of uses both the dark and light like Luke does. And it'll just be awesome. I really don't have enough foresight. And like I'm a, trying, gray, what's a gray that? Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. And part of me, too, is I'm trying not to think about it too much because, again, I want to be surprised by what happens in the new movie or whatever. So I got, I kind of like the element of surprise in good movies and stuff like that. But I, I like that idea. Th- I, have, I have a theory on who Supreme Leader Snoke is, too. Want to hear that? Yeah, because I have no idea who that dude is. Okay, so... It's Wicket. <laughs> Finally. So after after Jedi, we find that so Wicket's old. Maybe after like five years, his Ewoks age faster than normal people because they're like animals. They're like hamsters, yeah. So he's like going through the forest and he's hearing these rumors. Like Ewok technology advances a lot. In that time, because all the stuff from the Death Star crash on it indoors, so they find all this technology. Mm-hmm. So they're a little bit more advanced. And these kids are like, we're seeing, they're seeing ghosts in this part of the forest. And they're just getting kind of scared. So, uh, Wicket goes to investigate, and he finds that, uh, he finds it's like scary. There's like shadows moving in the forest. He's like, what's going on? And he finds the, the corpse of Emperor Palpatine there. And his force ghost is like a shadow instead of like uh, a blue light. Mm-hmm. His is darkness. Cause he's the dark side. And he's like, yo, I'll teach you uh, about the dark side. I'm not sure what his reasoning for teaching Wicked the dark side. But he's like, you're you're getting older you don't have much time left. You know this. I can sense like something in you. Mm-hmm. Like he's maybe he's a little bit force attuned. Yeah, because he's obviously <laughs> he was a a very main helpful character within the movie. So mm-hmm. there must be something extra going on in him. And now he's pissed that everybody left him, and he wanted to go. So right. he has a driving he, force. He, it's like the best part of his life was like fighting with the resistance, and he wants to fight more. Mm-hmm. And his friends died and, like, all this stuff. And so he's like, uh, I know you're going to die soon. I can teach you these techniques to live longer and stuff. So he, like, slowly corrupts Wicket mm-hmm. and turns him evil. And then, like, Wicket learns he gets smarter and he, like, I don't know. That's as far as I've gotten. <laughs> I just want Wicket in the new trilogy. That's all I want. That's hilarious and amazing at the same time. I want him to do that little run again and when he hops off the log and he's like <laughs> waving his arms in the air. That's my favorite part of the original trilogy. My favorite part of all three of those original movies is that when Wicked hops off the log and wiggles. <laughs> That's it. You have anything else you want to add? Oh, I like the thumbs up with BB. BB-8. Oh yeah, I agree. I was I was assuming that BB-8 was just going to be that stupid, annoying character like Jar Jar, who's supposed to be adorable, and that's it. He was great. Loved him. I heard somebody also complaining about like uh, R2D2. Just it's like everything happens, and then it's like, oh, R2D2 just woke up, <laughs> whatever. And it's like, yeah, it's the Force. The Force woke him up. He's like freaking. He's he's been with, or either that or um, Luke woke him up after he felt what was going on. He's like, okay, now it's time to find me. So then they find the rest of the map and they go find him. Or maybe he was monitoring Star Killer Base and he knew that it got destroyed and he it was safe for them to go and find Luke. Because mm-hmm. if they, if they went and found him and he, 
they still had Star Killer Base. They'd be like, oh, well, and then they were like tracking them and they didn't know. Mm-hmm. They could just be like, bye, Luke, see you, spell you later. Yeah. If they could blow planets up from like light years away. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I find that argument to be invalid and stupid. But You're stupid if you agree with that. You're stupid! Every bit of you. Stupid. Stupid. Mm. You're stupid. Mm. Well, anyways, yeah, that's all I got. I was kind of disappointed that they, didn't, they only had X-Wings and TIE Fighters. They didn't have any other types of ships. Yeah. There was no Y-Wings. There was no A-Wings. There was mm-hmm. no... Tie interceptors, no tie bombers. Yeah. I don't know. I haven't. I have, didn't actually think about that. <clears throat> think about that. Da, da, da. Dumb. Yeah, my favorite tie fighters are the ones with like the pointy ones. I think that's the kind Darth Vader had. The interceptors. <laughs> Where, like, oh, Dar- fr- Darth Vader's was like angled. Yeah, Darth Vader's was kind of like a tie bomber. But it wasn't quite as big, and it was a lot more agile. Yeah, the TIE Bomber tapped the two. Yeah, and I, he kind of had TIE Bomber wings on his, but then the TIE Interceptors are the ones that the wings kind they're of like, come in at that angle, like, but they've got they're the... They're like pointed. Yeah, the like the wing separates at the front with the blasters, and they're like super fast and agile and everything. Those are always my favorite uh, in the Battlefront, when there were space battles. Yeah. I always like those. Yep, me too. <clears throat> I always, I'm a big fan of the B-Wing. I think I'm one of the few people that really likes those. But the Which one, one's that? It's the one where like the cockpit is like way out on the top. And it's got a big wing down here. And then when it opens up into attack position, like the two wings come out. So it's kind of T-shaped. It's pretty awesome. Mm-hmm. The cockpit kind of looks like on the Millennium Falcon. And it like as the plane rotates, it kind of stays in position. Always, it's always like in a fixed position, I think. Huh. Maybe not, but yeah. I don't remember that one. It shows up like one time, very shortly. But it's cool. That's cool. What's your favorite Starship? Let us know. Yeah. Star Wars only, not that Star Trek crap. Yeah, Star, Star Trek's crappy. We hate it here. If you like Star Trek, unsubscribe. Don't, don't do it, please. Don't. No. <laughs> yeah, tell us no. about your favorite uh, Star Wars spaceship. Starship, tell whatever you call it. Star Destroyers are cool now. Yeah. Also. Cool now. They're always cool. They were. The Super Star Destroyer, that was great. How many people do you think it takes to run a Star Destroyer? Um, Thousands. Like the size of these things. Everyone in Clinton would have to get on it to run it. Yeah, because that means... I was like, I would have to like get a whole crew of people and like... I just want to fly around in space. Mm-hmm. Get a Millennium Falcon. Maybe one guy. Oh, no, but got I like, want a Star Destroyer. <laughs> they've got like one control stick, and you can fly it from that if you want. Beep, beep, beep. I'm sure it's like a, like a battleship. you got to like push all these buttons to move it. Yeah. Well, we'll get, we'll, gonna... we'll get one, and we'll, uh, we'll fix it up so one person can drive it. Okay, cool. <laughs> I just want to use an air horn in space. <laughs> so there'd be a vacuum horn? Yep. <laughs> Whoa. I'll just fire the turbo lasers. <laughs> pew, 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 pew. All right. Well, Marcus, do you have any recommendations? See Star Wars. Star Wars. That's all I got. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star Wars. Star... Oh. <coughs> what about you, Tuck? Uh, Any I haven't read anything really that like, great, so. Yeah, just see Star Wars. Agreed. Yeah, have a good week. Like, comment, subscribe. We're available on iTunes. We have a Lipson page where you can download the episodes from there if you don't like iTunes. And, uh, mm-hmm. uh, we are on YouTube at The Beverage. The Beverage. It's the channel. Uh, all this is in the show notes beneath. I'll have links to the article on the Pokemon Go. The Apocalypse trailer will be in the show notes. 
wherever the notes may be, <laughs> mm-hmm. description. Uh, <sighs> our next episode will be on in the new year. Hmm. Uh, the not the the tenth. No, wait. That was that was 2016. 26. The 9th. Saturday the 9th will be our next episode. Bye up. So, I hope everyone has a good Christmas. Mama Christmas. And a New Year's Eve and day. Uh, uh. 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 All right, that's it. All I right, think. that's it. I think everybody sign off. Everybody sign off. Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.